DMR, D-Star, System Fusion? Are you confused by digital modes? Looking for an explanation? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie, with me Keith. I recently produced a video looking at multi-mode digital voice repeaters. I'll leave a caption on the screen and a link in the description below. As a result, I received several requests from fellow radio hams asking if I would do a video describing the differences between the various different digital voice modes. So here it is. It's important to understand some of the main differences between analog and digital voice modes. The first one being that with digital voice, as it says, it converts your voice into a digital format which is transmitted along with other bits of digital information, such as call signs, text, name or GPS information. And depending on the mode that you select, you can purchase handhelds, mobile units and even base units. One of the great things about amateur radio is that we like to experiment. And for that reason, the number of digital voice modes seems to increase quite rapidly. So far, we have the main ones being D-Star, DMR, C4FM or System Fusion, P25 and NXDN. And in this video, I'm going to look specifically at D-Star, DMR and C4FM. Radio hams who own digital voice radios have a number of ways of communicating with fellow hams. The first two are very similar, if not identical, to how you would operate on analog. The first one being simplex or point to point, and the second one being through a repeater that's not linked to the internet. Where repeaters are linked to the internet, radio hams can contact fellow radio hams either through the repeater, connected to other internet repeaters, or operators using hotspots. The most noticeable difference between digital and analog modes is that in digital modes you can use hotspots and digital repeaters. Digital modes are not directly compatible with each other. This requires some form of bridging. Some digital modes also require you to register your call sign and get a user ID before you're able to access the network. And also, some modes require the radio to be set up using quite complex systems as part of what's known as a code plug. There's lots of information on the internet about this. Most digital modes can send additional data such as GPS, text or greeting messages. The first digital mode we're going to explore is D-Star. D-Star users link to the internet into reflectors. Reflectors are a group of networks all interlinked and they normally take the format of either DCS, REF, XRX or XRF. For instance, a user may decide to connect to reflector DCS002 and this is the worldwide reflector. D-Star users are required to register their call sign to enable them to use repeaters or hotspots. Repeaters will have a call sign which is normally followed by a letter that indicates the frequency band that it's operating on. It's interesting to know that D-Star is also now available on some ICOM HF radios. Because D-Star is a digital mode, if you're listening on an analog radio, this is all that you will hear. The next digital mode that we're going to explore is DMR. Now, for radio amateurs, we use Tier 2 sets. You may see some for sale marked Tier 1. These are not compatible with our systems. Users of DMR connect to the internet via talk groups. And they normally operate on two different servers. The DMR Plus, or in the UK it's known as Phoenix, or the BM Brandmeister server. Users are required to register their call sign to use repeaters and they will be given a number which needs to be entered into their radio to give them access to the system. Operators will also notice that colour codes are used 
and these are very similar to CTCSS tones on repeaters. The difficult part of DMR is that it uses time division multiple access or TDMA to enable two time slots and I'll explain this now. On analog we normally have a bandwidth of 12 kilohertz but with DMR and some other modes we have two 6.25 kilohertz shared bandwidth giving 12 kilohertz but it's separated into the two time slots time slot 1 and time slot 2. So what does this mean for the radio amateur? Well in actual fact you can have two people on the same frequency transmitting and receiving at exactly the same time one using time slot 1 and one on time slot 2 and for this reason some talk groups operate on time slot 1 and some on time slot 2. Now hopefully I'm not going to confuse you by giving you some real life examples. The repeater that I run, GB7PP, enables operators to go in on talk group 1, time slot 1, colour code 3 and this is gives them access to the worldwide talk group. It also enables operators to go in on talk group 840, time slot 2, colour code 13 which is an internet linking system of all the repeaters in my local area. As before, because DMR is a digital mode, if you listened on an analog radio, this is all you'd hear. The final system we're going to examine is C4FM or Yaesu System Fusion. System Fusion enables users to link to the internet via what's known as rooms. These rooms again are another servers and they're normally categorised as FCS or YSF networks. Yesu also operates what's known as a WireZX system and this is able to be accessed using C4FM but it requires YSF FCS bridges. These are links between the two systems. Now C4FM operates two different bandwidths. A 6.25 kHz bandwidth known as Digital Narrow or DN and a 12 kHz voice wide mode or VW. In DN mode the voice is carried on the 6.25 kHz and the other 6.25 kHz is used for data, text and even pictures. And if you were to listen on an analog radio, this is what you'd hear. So there you are. D-Star, C4FM and DMR. But which one is the best? Personally, I use all three and I can't tell much difference between any of them. You'll see lots of debate about people saying that one is better than the other, and that's down to their personal preference, as is what you buy. The first thing is it depends on what your budget is. There are a lot of cheap radios on the market at the moment, certainly for DMR. The downside of DMR is that it requires a code plug to operate on DMR modes. The code plug can be downloaded off the internet, and shared amongst fellow radio hams. The difficulty is, if you get one parameter wrong, then your radio won't access your hotspot or a repeater, and unless you know where that parameter is that's wrong, it will frustrate you. Trust me, I know, I've been there. There are a lot of different hotspots and repeaters, and it depends on what's in your area to what you can access. It's no good buying a D-Star radio if you haven't got a hotspot or there are no repeaters and if none of your friends have got them then quite frankly you're going to be calling and talking to yourself so it comes down to your own personal preference and that's a decision that only you can make through looking at videos like this or searching the internet that concludes our whistle stop tour of digital voice modes if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll come back to you with an answer. I hope you found this informative and enjoyable. If you have, give us a thumbs up. 
it certainly gives me a boost and lets me know that I'm doing something right. Even consider subscribing and hitting the bell and that way every time I put new content on you'll get notified. So my name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie. I'll catch you next time.